Hello everyone, this is Rizorat from Radicat. In this video, I want to talk about Microsoft certifications in Power BI and Microsoft Fabric space. If you are looking for a job in this uh, area, uh, if you want to get certified, what are these certifications? What exams should you pass? We are not going to uh, teach what you need in each exam, but we will cover the areas that are uh, measured in each exam so that you can use it as a reference in other videos and resources, you can go and search for those materials. Let's go and check it out. So for, uh, for working in Power BI and uh, Microsoft Fabric space, there are some Microsoft certifications that you get, uh, but first question you might have might be, what is the use of this certification? So I'll go into some of these slides and I'll show you that. Um, so as you can see here, um, uh, these are some of the certifications available in uh, different technologies in Microsoft Space. Uh, it is not just for Power BI, it is not for data uh, analytics, it is for anything. There are certifications for business applications, certifications for uh, Office 365, security, infrastructure, uh, and there are of course certifications for Power BI and Microsoft Fabric as well. Having these certifications, to, in order to get these certifications, you need to pass some of the exams. Some of the certifications you need to pass multiple exams, some of them you need to pass one exam. Uh, these certifications usually cover, and their exams, usually cover uh, most of the skills and knowledge required for someone to do that particular job that this certification is targeting to. For example, if the certification is about building data analytics solution, uh, the skills measured related to that are things that you would really need in a real world situation that you would go and build a Power BI solution. Uh, getting these certifications are helpful in a way that um, you know, first it would help you in your career development, in, uh, in your job finding, but it is not enough. You should not just rely on these certifications because certifications just check your knowledge of the subject, but the real world experience, you cannot gain it with the certification. So make sure you get your hands dirty, go and do uh, the job in addition to these certifications, then these certifications would be an asset to help. Uh, sometimes also you are doing already your work, like you are doing Power BI work and um, you are working on a specific area of it. You probably haven't touched all aspects of it, such as for example, publishing the website and things like that. You may not face that. Uh, a certification like this would show you what are other areas in that technology, which you probably haven't explored yet. So you'll go and learn about it and keep yourself up to date as well. So these are some of the benefits of certifications. Now. Uh, if you want to get certified in Power BI and Microsoft Fabric, there are three um, exams. Uh, the first one is targeting for Power BI. This certification is called Power BI Data Analysis, Data Analyst Associate. Uh, in order to get this, you need to pass one exam called PL300. PL300 is an exam that mainly focuses on your Power BI skill set. So it will uh, check basically, are you comfortable using Power BI to get data uh, from different sources, transform it, build your data model, write calculations using DAX, visualize your data, and finally deploy and publish your solution in a service and share it with your users with the security and everything related to that. So this is an exam that covers all of that. PL300 has been in the market for some years already. Power BI itself has been in the market for more than nine years. PL300 is like about six, seven years old now. So considered as a quite major exam. Uh, the areas that are uh, measured in this exam are mainly on Power BI area. Uh, prepare the data is the aspect that you would need Power Query and, and get data experience. This would assist your uh, skill set and knowledge on connecting to different data sources, getting the data, the, some data cleanup, data transformations, um, options that we have within Power Query Editor, uh, all of those. Model the data would uh, not only assess your um, ability to build a build a star schema, dimension table, fact tables, uh, but it also checks your understanding of relationships. There are different things in the relationships in Power BI that you don't have it in a normal database, transactional database, such as direction of relationship, things like that. Plus, 
the model, the data would also uh, check your uh, understanding of DAX as an expression language and calculation, uh, DAX as a calculation language, and also calculations in Power BI you can use, uh, you can write with DAX and some areas on that. Then visualize and analyze the data is mostly on the visualization side of Power BI, applying some best practices, how to configure some of the visualization aspects, edit interaction between visuals, some of those things like navigation between pages, things that are in the visual front end. Uh, and then finally, manage and secure Power BI is the area that would cover uh, the ability to, uh, after building your solution, publish it to the Power BI website, the workspace setup, governance, security around that area. Uh, if you need to set up role level security, what are things you need to consider uh, when you are sharing Power BI app versus workspaces, all of those aspects, deployment pipelines, incremental refresh, things like that, that you might need to, uh, in order to govern your solution and have a uh, successful deployment. So these are all Power BI skill set. So basically PL300 is for someone who is um, living in the world of Power BI. If you are working with Power BI all the time, this is your day job, then this is the exam that would be helpful for you uh, to get past. And then if you want to step up, especially these days that Microsoft Fabric is announced, if you want to step up and uh, expand your area into other aspects, not only Power BI, but also data warehousing, data engineering, and data integration, because Fabric is not just about Power BI. Fabric is like a full suite, which includes Power BI as one of the modules or workloads, but it includes a lot of other things. And there's an exam for it. This exam, uh, when you get the certification, it is called Fabric Analytics Engineer Associate. To pass, to get this, you need to pass one exam and that exam is DP600. Now these are not uh, related to each other. Like you can get DP600 first and then go and get your PL300. They are totally separated from each other. You do not need to go to like um, uh, doing that first and then coming and doing that. Although, because most of the uh, most of the users come from Power BI side, they, use, they usually start with PL300, but there is no relationship between these. Uh, in this exam, in DP600, which is fairly new, not a lot, like past few years, uh, pretty much, uh, since Fabric announced, so basically like a year and a little bit more than that. Uh, the skills that are required for this are uh, wider than just Power BI itself. So these are some of those skills. Plan, implement, and manage a solution for data analytics. So this is more wider area of not just looking at your report or semantic model, but also looking at your entire solution, how you are going to build it, where is the environment, what uh, fabric capacity license you might need, and what are the metrics related to that that can help you, how do you set up your workspaces, your deployment pipelines, your uh, dev environment, test environment, production environment, what is your security strategy, what is your governance strategy. <clears throat> Uh, what things you consider in sensitivity of your data. So all of these are mostly like wider area of let's step back, look at our data analytics solution and see what you need to get it set up correctly. Uh, the next stage is prepare and serve data. This is mostly targeting the data integration component or module or workload of Microsoft Fabric. Data integration workload <coughs> of Microsoft Fabric basically includes uh, data factory which includes two main objects, data pipeline and data flow, data pipeline as an orchestration tool, data flow as a data transformation tool. So this would be a part of the exam that would assess your ability to use these different tools together um, and, uh, and together build a data transformation technology so that you can prepare the data, bring the data into the structure that you need. It also uh, checks your understanding of lake house and warehouse as objects that you would have uh, to store the data in this, their differences, uh, ways to work with them. Then implement and manage <clears throat> semantic model is mainly the Power BI side of this exam. This is the area that uh, you would basically be assessed based on your Power BI semantic model knowledge. Uh, the relationship between tables, DAX calculations, some of the modeling aspects, optimization techniques on that, especially on larger data models, because in fabric environment we might work with larger uh, semantic models. Uh, anything related to your Power BI semantic model would be assessed to this. So this part is very much like 
PL300, but it might even include some, uh, some more optimization techniques in it. Uh, and then explore and analyze data is all about connecting to your uh, objects for data analytics and using that, uh, using the methods you have to analyze the data, like for example, connecting to your lake house, connecting to your warehouse, using SQL analytics endpoint, writing SQL code to uh, do some data exploration, or even using XMLA endpoint to connect your semantic model and do some exploration. So things like that, using data management views, uh, overall, DP600 is not covering the entire Microsoft Fabric. This is important to understand because a lot of people, when they think about DP600, uh, one of the things that put them off of this exam is that they think, well, Fabric is quite a large uh, area. Uh, DP600 probably is not an exam for me yet. Not all of those workloads are assessed in this exam. For example, real-time intelligence, we don't have that in this exam, not as of today, of course. Uh, or data science, we don't have that in this exam. Data activator, I also think that is not also part of this exam. So mainly areas in this exam are data warehousing, data engineering, and data engineering part of it is, I would say, a very light data engineering uh, section, uh, Power BI modeling, and, um, and of course, the data integration, data factory, and all of that. Uh, this is DP600. Now, a new exam announced, and this is very new, like uh, basically it's announced a couple of days ago. Uh, this exam, DP700, is still a beta exam. So still it would be under development and lots of changes might happen on that. This is for, this is titled as implementing data engineering solution using Microsoft Fabric. Now, it is not yet clear that what this exam, what certification this exam would lead to. Uh, later on, it might have a separate certification that this would lead to, or both DP600 and DP700 might be the two exams required to get that Fabric Analytics Engineer Associate uh, certification. We don't know that yet. But what we know is that this exam is a fairly new exam. No one actually has passed it yet because the exam is not open. It <coughs> It would be open from 22nd of October this year, 2024. So by the time that you are watching this video, this might be already uh, available. Uh, usually it is beta for some month first, and then uh, it comes out of beta, and then we would know what certification this leads to. Uh, at the moment, we know what skills are measured and what are the focus areas of this exam. The main thing about this exam, which makes it different from DP600, DP700 has a higher focus on real-time uh, intelligence solution. So we would have more KQL used into that, Custo databases, plus the SQL as a language as well. So uh, as you see, the areas are pretty similar to some of the areas in DP600. <clears throat> My feeling is that implement and manage analytical solution would not only include data warehouse, lake house, your Power BI semantic model, but it also includes KQL, event house objects, uh, the ingest and transform data, my feeling is that that is not only including data factory, data pipeline and data flow, but it also includes event stream because in event stream, you can also do some uh, transformation in real time before passing your uh, data to the output of your KQL database or event house. And then monitor and optimize analytical solution would not only include those SQL analytics endpoints, SQL, a script to do data exploration, it would also, um, this is my assumption, it would also include KQL script. So understanding of KQL, how to connect to your KQL database and event house and query that data. So all of these three exams, basically, these are the exams that would, uh, that you would require to get, um, um, to get, and uh, not all of them are, uh, I mean, you don't need to get them all to show your expertise. Um, and you might have a good career already without having any of these. I just actually passed these, like a couple of these exams, VL300 and DP600, like uh, in, earlier this year in Microsoft Build. Before that, I didn't have that myself. Uh, but it's a good way to assess yourself, to see which areas you need to get more work on. Because when you pass these exams, you get like a, a 
you get a, a summary of that, like which area and how much of that each area you got passed. You need a 700 score to pass the exam. The total score is uh, 1000, uh, but it shows you that, for example, in this area, you are lacking uh, some, uh, experience, uh, some knowledge. In this area, you need some improvement. So it would be good practice for yourself to go and then learn about it. What are study materials for these? Uh, now, there are plenty of study materials. Microsoft itself um, has some of the study materials you can use, uh, but the thing is that you don't have to go and use it. This, um, this guidelines of what skills are measured, that is the most important thing. So basically you need to know what skills are measured. Once you know that, then you can go and use any of the online resources. Like we have plenty of resources in Radicat website, articles, videos, our trainings usually are uh, covering even more uh, content than what you need for this for passing this certification. But there are many other articles, videos online, free available for you. You can actually, based on these agendas, go and learn that subject and then move to the next agenda item and then go and learn it. And once you have done all of those, once you are ready, then you can go and take these exams. Sometimes these exams can be available uh, for free or as a discounted option, especially if you are attending one of the Microsoft uh, conferences, they usually have an exam room that you can go and uh, attend for free, uh, which is helpful. If you are not attending for free, it's not an expensive exam as well. It is like $160 and you can pass it. Um, uh, like there are, there are uh, plenty of uh, promotional, uh, promotional items related to that. So you would have the options to go and use it. Uh, I hope this video was useful for you to learn about Microsoft certification in Power BI and Microsoft Fabric Space. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.